Hi, everybody. This is JJ Long from JJ Artworks, and welcome to episode 71 of our podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. We truly appreciate it. And this week's episode, I actually want to talk about the musician's struggle. And for those of you guys that don't know me that well, uh, I'm actually also a professional musician. And throughout all of my 20s, I played in a couple of professional bands and was able to tour the country a bunch. And music and the musician struggle is something that's very, very dear to my heart and something that brings a lot of joy and pain (laughs) at the same time. And today I really sort of want to honor those struggles with you guys because I was able to actually, I I had a great time last week. I got to support some of my friends play uh, at an open mic uh, last week and it, it was a ton of fun. I got the bandage again and it just brought me back to that time in my 20s and early 30s where I was really hustling and grinding with my music. And I want to share a quick story with you guys on something I observed at the the gig last week and how, (laughs) how the musician struggle is real. And it's just like any other art form. It's like painting, writing, acting. I mean, I really think if you want to go down the road of being a self-employed artist and then potentially a built business owner and building a creative empire, there are a lot of pain points and obstacles you need to kind of weave through and and, and blast through to become successful. And I just, where I hadn't been to a music gig in a while, it really reminded me of, first of all, how passionate I used to be with the music. I'm still passionate with my music, but when you're in a a band with a group of guys or or, or girls, whatever uh, your group, group is composed of, um, that energy and that electric feeling of being on stage and performing in front of a crowd, it, it's really, the adrenaline gets moving and it, it, it does something. It does something for my soul, my spirit. And I, I really, really got a taste for that again this past week, seeing my, seeing my friends play. Um, but I want to share a quick story. So, and I'm going to be kind of vague because uh, I don't want anyone to get upset over this this uh, observation I made. So I'm going to be very, very general. But I was at my my friend's gig last week. They played an awesome set, acoustic music, really, really good. They did some cover songs. And uh, there was just a few bands that played that night. And there was a tip jar uh, in front of the stage. Anyone can come up and just drop in a few dollars or however much money they wanted to in the tip jar. And at the end of the night, I don't know how much money was in the tip jar, but at at the end of the night, there was some altercations on how they were going to divide the tip jar. Um, And and to be honest, I don't know what the solution was. I don't know what happened. But traditionally, I think when it comes down to a tip jar, usually you split the tips evenly, you know, um, amongst all the bands. That's been my um, experience touring in bands for, you know, almost eight years. So, but, you know, to each their own. I I don't know how the promoter handled things or whatever, but um, there was some, you know, uh, concerns over the tip jar at the end of the night. And, uh, and it wasn't even my, my, my friends that were complaining or anything like that. There was just some words being said, and I was just kind of a fly on the wall, like observing everything. And, it, I had so many mixed emotions, you guys, over this experience because I can't tell you how many times I experienced this on the road when I was touring in bands. And, and um, it was, those tips are very, very important. And they might've been squabbling over maybe like 20 or $40, which is super minuscule. And it, at the same time, I was kind of witnessing this. I was like, wow, I can't believe like, how far I've come since those days, really like fighting over the tip jar. But then I remember why I was fighting over the tip jar back in the day. And it's because when you're trying to make a living off of your music and off of your creativity, and especially if you're relying on whatever income you can make when you're on the road, like that's gas money that's going to get you to the next state or the next gig. And making money from the tip jar, making money at the door, whether you get a guarantee, whether you get a percentage of ticket sales, whatever it is, and then making money at the merch table, 
all those things add up and they're super, super important because where you're pouring your heart and soul on stage uh, and it, it, it's really, really difficult to make a living as a musician. I, I think making a living as a musician is actually more difficult than making a living as a painter or an actor. I, I know that sounds crazy, but that's just been my experience. Um, and I think a writer is, is up there with musician too. I think it's, it's pretty difficult to make a living as a writer. Uh, unless you have a publishing house kind of push behind you and you could I guess you can corporate it corporate it as you know well if I had a record label behind me or a painting label or uh, an agency representing my my acting career then yes the more troops you can have on your team to help catapult you into the stratosphere with your art and creativity that that's what you want but when you're starting off you're probably just doing things on your own you're probably self-employed and you're self-promoting yourself you know you're the one that's booking the events you're the one that's driving to the gig you're the one that is uh, manning the merch table performing you know working with all these promoters and everything and it, it just seeing these people squabble over a tip jar it just brought back so many emotions because i can't tell you how many stories i have where you know my, my uh technically the third band i was in but my, my second pretty serious band that i was in we were touring the country um, at one point in time, and I, I, this happened several times in the road where I would have to confront a promoter because they either didn't want to pay us for our hard work. You know, we put on like an hour, hour and a half, sometimes even maybe like a two hour set, you know, doing like 20, 30 songs or whatever it is. And there weren't a lot of people in the crowd, but, you know, we traveled all the way from Boston, Massachusetts to play in Montana or wherever we were. And they either didn't want to pay us or there were times where, um, and this was like early, early in my career. This is like the, the first band, first East Coast band I was in, um, where they would pay us out um, based on the amount of people that we drew in. So say we brought in, 30 people we'd get paid per head so whatever deal we worked out with the promoter that night it might be five dollars per head or two dollars per head whatever it is so it could be 150 dollars could be 100 dollars you know whatever agreement we worked out with the promoter and there was several times where you know i i know every, all my friends that came to see us play and i'm counting all the people and i'm like all right so we brought 30 people in today and then at the end of the night the promoter would pay us out according to saying that only 20 people came through the door and you know it's like again it's it's i'm squabbling over peanuts but it's more of like the principal things and you know come on man like why are you stiffing us like i i know exactly how many people we brought in and and just seeing my friends last week um it just brought back all those memories and it's it, i have a very very soft spot for artists because like i said um, if this is your first time visiting our youtube channel if you really don't know me from a hole in the wall i've been uh, a self-employed artist for almost 20 years now just making a living off of my painting my singing my acting my writing playing in bands doing voiceover work i'm starting to do martial arts nowadays so you know eventually i'm going to pivot and shift and start auditioning for for action movies and stuff like that so I'm just a full-fledged artist before I'm a business owner. And I really, really, the, you know, my, my main purpose behind this podcast, behind this YouTube channel is to add uh, other, is to add value to other artists and creative entrepreneurs that are trying to do the same thing. Because I've struggled for many, 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 many years. And I... I just, I, I feel it. I feel, I feel it to my core. And and when I saw uh, my, my friend's band, like, you know, uh, when I saw that squabbling over the tip jar, I got it. I got it. And then at the same time, I'm like, oh man, I, I would love to perform again, but I would completely do it in a different way. I would not be doing, you know, the open mic as much, just trying to survive. I, I would have to have a different perspective or a different per, uh, a different mindset shift in order to put myself in a position again like that. Um, and and I, I think because I've, I've thought about doing open mics again just with an acoustic guitar or 
playing some quick co chords on the keyboard. I'm not really good at piano yet, but, um, but I, you know, I, I think where I've sort of evolved from my, from the early days in my music career is that it would all just be about creative expression. And I would remove the business element from it because I think at some point in my music career, I lost sight of the why I was doing certain things. And I was looking at, I, I just want to do this and survive. And the money was something that kind of clouded um, my judgment a little bit or my reasoning behind doing the music. And I, you know, I feel a little embarrassed saying that, but it's the truth. I mean, when you're so passionate about something, um, you know, when you're very passionate about your art, you want to be able to make a living from it. And every, every little dollar and cents matter the tip jar, the merch table, getting money from a promoter, selling tickets, you know, selling a CD or shirt or stickers. Like I, I totally get it. So today you guys, um, you know, it, it's more of a, an episode where I just want to share my, um, my sincerity with all you other artists out there. And I just want to, uh, you know, acknowledge the struggle that you're all going through I totally feel it to my core. <laughs> and uh, I guess the, the, the last message I want to impart to you guys is to keep going, keep pushing forward, keep doing what you feel like you're meant to do. The universe does have your back. Things will align. Things will gel together. I think you just have to go through uh, a certain amount of suffering until you get to a certain point where things really start aligning and you, you're making decisions based on a place of strength rather than desperation. Um, and that's what I've learned over the years. So anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Truly, truly appreciate it. If this is your first time visiting our YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button below. We come up with weekly videos. If you're listening to this on the streaming waves like Spotify and iHeartRadio and Pandora and all that, thank you so much for listening. We truly appreciate it. And if you haven't heard yet, uh, we actually have our new brand of heavy body acrylic paints that are available off of our website. This is our own custom branded acrylic paints, and we are just super, super excited to be offering this to the general public. So uh, head over to JJOutworks.com and you can check out all the 10 colors we have available. Or you can also get our paint on Amazon as well and just uh, enter in JG Artwork Studios and you'll see our paint pop up. We're actually in the process of creating a brand registry on Amazon. Uh, we're just trying to get approved for our trademark and all that stuff. But anyways, love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're an artist, keep on pushing forward. I love you guys. And I'll talk to you guys next week in episode 72. Have a good one. Bye-bye.